guys, it's Stephanie, and today I wanted to do the mid-year bookish freakout tag. I wasn't actually tagged by anyone, I know, loser, but I just wanted an excuse to reflect on the books I had read the first half of the year, and this just looked like a really fun tag, been watching it go around. Um, I don't know who created the tag, but I will find out and put their channel um, link in the description box down below. So the first question is, what was the best book you read in 2016? Starting with a hard question right out the gate. Um, I read a lot of great books this year. I mean, this was the year that I finally read uh, William Faulkner's As I Lay Dying, and I did that as a buddy read. And I know that this is a very important piece of literature and stream of consciousness writing, and and it's just great, and it's a classic. But if I had to pick a book that I feel I just really enjoyed and I thought just in a sense checked all the boxes off for me. Um, I would have to say Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides. I absolutely loved this. I read this with Maddie over at the Maddie Hatter and this follows the um, the protagonist in this story is uh, born a type of hermaphrodite or intersex I think is the correct term for it. Um, and it's a family saga story, which I didn't know going into this. And you know how I feel about multi-generational family saga stories. They're like my absolute favorite. And it was interesting to look at Greek culture. And I absolutely love Jeffrey Eugenides. Number two, what is the best sequel you've read in 2016? This is going to be hard. So I'm going to go with the only sequel that I have read in 2016, and that is The Likeness by Tana French. This is the second book in the Dublin Murder Squad series. Um, I really enjoyed it. I gave it like 4.5 stars. Some people like it more than the first one, In the Woods, but I like In the Woods a little more than The Likeness. I was really excited because I loved Cassie in the first one and I was really excited that this book was going to be about her and I was not disappointed in that sense at all. Number three, what is a new release you want to read but haven't gotten to yet? Um, I don't usually read a whole lot of new releases, but Kate from Kate Howe um, tagged me in this photo she saw on Instagram from Random House and they were showing a book that was coming out and they had a little blurb and the blurb was talking about how it was a multi-generational tale about this family in Italy. It looked like it had some magical realism and my heart started pounding and I absolutely just needed to get my hands on this book and I haven't felt that overwhelming like desire to read something in a long time. I was one of the first people to get it at my library. Um, this is The House at the Edge of Night by Catherine Banner. I am a few pages into this and I just absolutely love it. It has just the right amount of whimsical and it is multi-generational, it is historical fiction, it takes place in an island um, off Italy and it is just amazing. Oh, I just, I am enjoying this so much. So um, it's cheating because I am technically reading it right now but this is the new release. This is probably my only anticipated new release this year. Number four, what was the biggest disappointment? Ooh, negative questions. The biggest disappointment so far has been Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. This is a horror novel for adults. Um, but when you pick it up, it is small, you know, it's a novella. And then I opened it and the font was huge. I just, the feeling of it felt like I was reading middle grade horror, like I was reading a Goosebumps novel, but then it would have very adult themes in it. And that mean that wasn't the problem I had in it. Um, the problem I had was just the story was just ridiculous. And I realized that, that some horror thrives on getting the reader to buy into ridiculous things, but I just could not, it was too ridiculous. Um, the plot was basically uh, Thomas Tryon's Harvest Home plus The Purge, which I think sounds amazing. That sounds like it would be really great, but it was not. It was just very predictable. I was bored the whole time I was reading it. And this won the Bram Stoker Award, you know, for horror fiction. And I am so confused. I don't get it. It was not good in any way. I just did not enjoy this book in any way at all. 
and sorry I'm not done with my rant yet and it was written in this very obnoxious second person kind of writing where he would be telling a part and be like but you know that's not the leaves rustling up behind him right I just hated it um like you were supposed to be like a character in the story like it starts off like oh you know you grew up here and some people like that it just was not my thing and it was very obnoxious throughout it was just it stuck out like a sore thumb and I hated it and it just made me cringe whenever I saw it I just I really didn't like this book I'm gonna number five what was the biggest surprise um, for me, it would have to be Everything I Don't Remember by Jonas Hassan Kamiri. This was a Swedish novel that was recently translated into English. Um, and nothing about this book led me to believe it wasn't going to be great. It was just the format in which I had received it. I got this as an arc, as an arc from NetGalley. And just the first few books I had gotten from there were a little disappointing. Um, I just had not had good luck with books from NetGalley. And then I got this and because of that I was really surprised it was really great it's about this reporter who is investigating the death of a young man who seems to have committed suicide but he's a little suspicious so he goes around interviewing his close friends and family and you are reading basically the interview switches perspectives and timelines and you really just get this picture of who this boy was that died I really loved it. I really loved the writing and it was just such a pleasant surprise to get something. You know, it was the first like really good book I read um, from NetGalley, so I was really happy about that. Number six, new favorite author. Um, I have already mentioned this in this video, but Jeffrey Eugenides. Um, I read The Virgin Suicides earlier this year and I just finished Middlesex and I do plan on reading The Marriage Plot soon, like I said. Um, and then I will have, I think, read everything, read all the novels that he's published to date. And I just, I absolutely love Jeffrey Eugenides. Um, the second one was uh, Karen Russell with Swamplandia. I just really loved the atmosphere and the feel of this novel. I really enjoyed it. I think this is her only novel and then she has two collections of short stories. Um, about vampires in the lemon grove which I do plan on starting soon I've heard a lot of really great things about this I believe uh, Conrad at the duck World edge uh, recommended this one and then I can't remember the title of the second one it's like girls raised by wolves it's like something about a home for girls raised by wolves and I'm, I'm butchering now as I say it so I'll include the real title down below the unbutchered version um, but she was just very whimsical and the writing was just beautiful and it was just oh, such a great experience to read her writing I loved it question seven who is your fictional crush I am not the kind of person that develops crushes on fictional characters but sometimes I do mentally cast people in the role of certain characters so it just helps me visualize what's going on better and helps me put a voice to that character and so when I read Sherry Goldhagen's In Some Other World Maybe I had just finished uh, binge watching all of HBO's Six Feet Under on Amazon Prime and side note that is one of my favorite shows now like ever it is like on my top five um anyway end of that and so I cast in the role of Adam I mentally cast Peter Krause and I find him I think he's a very attractive man um so I think like the whole time I read the novel I associated that character with Peter Krause um but I I really enjoyed this book and this was something that I, I branched out I don't usually read I think I don't know if this would be considered new adult but it was contemporary it was about uh, three groups of teenagers that um, are connected by the fact that on the same day in the early 90s they go see the same movie adaptation of a beloved comic book series called Eons and Empires and then throughout the next two decades you see these groups of teenagers lives all intertwine with each other and it was just really interesting and I was I really enjoyed this book number eight favorite character I'm gonna be lame um I don't usually have favorite characters but this year I read Curtis Settenfeld's Eligible which was a modern day retelling of Pride and Prejudice in a very 
like new adult contemporary type setting um and so just lizzie bennett from eligibles basically liz bennett from pride and prejudice very original i know but she's the best number nine a book that made you cry i almost don't want to include this because i didn't enjoy this book but the ending did have me tearing up a little bit um i'm a book crier that was extremely loud and incredibly close by jonathan saffron for um uh, you know this is about a boy who lost his father during 9 11 um and he is going on a a bit of a scavenger hunt to try to figure out the meaning of like a key that he thinks his father left behind for him to discover something that it leads to i hate child narrators and oscar is just the embodiment of everything i hate in a child narrator the whole world the whole work just felt very pretentious and i'm just not a huge fan of pretentiousness i don't know i think if i would have i think it might have been timing too if i had read this book as a teenager i would have been very moved by it and i'm sure it would hold a special place in my heart as a cynical adult however it just didn't do that for me unfortunately next question was a book that made you happy uh recently i listened to mindy kaling's is everyone hanging out without me and other concerns i absolutely adore mindy kaling she is just my favorite person ever and this book just solidified that i had read why not me last year but i hadn't read this was her first one when she was still a writer um on the office and it was just great i loved hearing her stories i just i just love her <laughs> number 11 was the most beautiful book you have bought or received in 20 in 2016 i can't talk today um recently i went to go visit my in-laws and my in-laws have um just a ton of stuff and basically whenever we go there they're like just take whatever you want and they have a lot of cool stuff <laughs> So when my husband and I basically went shopping at their house, there was this beautiful edition of Wuthering Heights. I just loved it. Let's see if I can find an illustration. Of course, now that I want to show you, um, but it's like illustrated and it has like the couple lines like that. I just, I loved it. And I was like, please, can I take this? And they're like, it's yours. Um, they also gifted me a set of like beautiful leather bound classics they're just gorgeous this is crime and punishment um but it's just i have a whole set of these now i like had a heart attack i was like this is oh my gosh and then um i also saw this edition of Grimm's fairy tales just really loved it uh, books you need to read by the end of the year. One is Faithful Place by Tana French because I do plan on getting caught up with the Dublin Murder Squad series. This is three, I think six just came out if I'm correct. Like I think it's a Broken Harbor secret place. I'm not entirely sure <laughs> but I, I do plan on getting caught up with the series. Um, and then I think I have a buddy read planned for um, We Were the Mulvaney's. <laughs> by Joyce Carol Oates. I mentioned I'm all about some family drama, so I'm really excited to get into Joyce Carol Oates. Also, I haven't read anything by jo Joyce Carol Oates, and I guess um, I know a lot of people really love her, so I'm really excited to read this. And the last question is, who is your favorite person in the community, like your favorite booktuber? Um, I am just going to say the first booktuber I discovered, but because because of her, I discovered the booktube community, and that is Katie from Chapter Stacks. I also really enjoy her videos because we have very similar tastes in books. We both like literary fiction and horror, and I found her channel because I was considering buying House of Leaves. Um, but before I spent that money, I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about it. But House of Leaves readers have this weird cult where they don't talk about anything that happens in the book um, or what the book is about at all. It's this weird like secret pact that um, everyone that has read it just follows. And I was getting really annoyed because I couldn't find any information about this book. 
So I finally, I got exasperated and I typed it into YouTube to see if I could find anything and her review popped up and it just gave me the right amount of information where she didn't spoil anything, but I was intrigued enough to go through with my purchase, buy it, read it, and it is a book that I really, really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, because of that, Katie from Chapter Stacks holds like a special part of my heart. He introduced me to all of you because I love like end of the year stuff and this is middle of the year reflective stuff. So. I tag Kate from Kate Hagging, uh, Liz from Now Voyaging, uh, Michelle from Mishmash, Rebecca at the Book Nester. Uh, both those two are newer booktubers. Uh, they are wonderful ladies. I think you should go check out their channels. So anyway, that is all I have for you today. Also, what is your favorite book that you have read so far in 2016? Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again soon.